Hi and welcome to the next session and now we'll go through uh, configuring the accelerometer on the STEAM32 F4 board okay so let's open edge and let's have a look at the user manual of STEAM32 F4 discovery okay so let's open this and let's go to documentation and let's have a look at the user manual we also need to have a look at the schematic probably so let's see acceler accelerometer okay so it has a three axis accelerometer and do we have a name for the accelerometer mm, no okay so let's go to CAD resources so basically CAD resources is the schematic and the PCV file for the board so if you look at under your board there would be a sticker in my case it's MB 997 D-01 so it would be this one probably yeah so let's open it okay so this is the schematic and this is the uh, programmer board and this is the the steam to do f407 um, controller it can be actually used as a baseline for your pcb and schematic design okay so let's go through so this is the the audio probably yeah it's the audio um speaker driver and let's have a look at here it's otg basically this is the usb micro ab uh, connector what else okay we have mems here okay so in my board the mems is lis 3 dsh okay so in order to activate that uh, we can take two approach so let's see if we can activate it somehow with the stm32 cube but that's my not that's not my preferred method but let's try so manage or yeah just select select then let's go through the mems so let's see if we can find it here lis 3 LIS 3 what was it SH something like okay DSH LIS 3 DSH okay I don't have it here but I know that this is already uh included in the bsp drivers okay so let's open the repository of um, the sm32 f4 cube package and let's go through um drivers and then bsp and then components okay so there is lis3 dsh here so we need to take this one okay so open this that's my way i don't know if there would be any, any other way but this is the way that i took for uh, using these components okay so just open your your previous code for usb and then just go through the uh, source let's close this as well we don't need it let's expand this a bit more okay so we have two um folders one is INC which is includes and the other one is SRC so includes is used for .h file the header files and sources for the source file okay it's important that you need to put .c files here and .h file here otherwise it will sh it will show you an error okay so let's let's try to import this okay LIS 3DSH we copy it to the source and then LIS3DSH copy to 
uh, H. So we have these two here. Okay. Then this is based on um, accelero.h file, which you can find it in the BSP as well. So let's go to common accelero.h. Okay, let's open this as well. Okay, so this is the accelero.h, and that's basically most you, most of the things that you need. Then we have a BSP driver for STM32F4 discovery board as well. It's not really a complicated driver, it's a very basic things and you already have most of it in your code, but just, just in case that we want to use the standard libraries, just try to import this as well. So we have STM32F4 discovery accelerometer, okay? So this is the accelerometer code, which is really not really that much. So we have the accelerometer in it, and then we have the accelerometer read ID, reset, click, IT config, click, IT clear, and then get wise Z. Okay, so let's let's import this as well. Just in case that you don't know what is accelerometer, accelerometer is basically a device that a sensor that measure the gravity force on a on a surface that surface is basically the sensor and sensor uh, uh, measure the gravity over itself and when you turn like when just imagine your mobile phone in your hand and then when you turn your your mobile phone you basically change the gravity and change the 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 effect of gravity on each xyz axis okay so when you turn your phone, the, the gravity changes, and from that you can um, understand the, the orientation of the phone, and basically you can turn the screen, for example. And in this board, this thing has happened as well. So uh, we'll go through it and we'll see how it works. Okay, so we brought the STM32 F4 accelerometer, and we also brought the accelerometer.h. But I, by mistake, I brought the .c file, which I don't need it, so I remove it. So we have .h.h .h here and .c here. So I think it should be OK. Yeah. And then we have .h. Uh, OK. So for .h, we need a couple of other stuff. So we already brought the 3dsh. So I just remove this part because it's, it's a path, basically, to this file. In my case, I don't have subfolders, and uh, like if I want to take the standard way, I should make like a, a folder here called components, and then uh, sorry, in this one, uh, like in the here, I should make a component folder and then put the, the the libraries there. Okay, but I just don't want to do that. Just make it more simple. So I just remove this because I have it already in my includes folder. Okay, we don't have this one. So the thing is that on SM32 F4 discovery, we might have two two types of accelerometer. One type is LIS302DL, and the other one is 3DSH. Okay, so it depends on the manufacturer and the the, the date that you got your board. Uh, most of us we we probably we have this LIS3DSH, but uh, the library handles both of them, so we, we need to bring the other one. Like we need to include the the other sensor as well in case somebody wanted to use the 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 LIS three hundred two uh, DH um, accelerometer. Okay, so just let's go back to the components. Let's open the LIS three two three hundred two DL. Let's open. Let's include the C file and H file okay so this is resolved the only thing is that we need to include a simple to discover that h which you, I, as i told you you can take it from here and then here then put it here and then that c file as well put it here i think that's all we need yeah let's just take a look at a similar to f4 discovery that h <clears throat> so it basically it has also the 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 LED definition, the button key definitions, well, it's not really something complicated. It's like it has the SPI pins, SPI functions, 
which are already prepared for this special board. So for example, in, on this board, if you want to select the accelerometer, so just let's look at here. So the accelerometer is working with SPI. I don't want to go through the, the, the details of SPI, but in SPI, you should select a sensor and then you talk with it. So you, you do, you have a chip select and then you select that component by toggling the pin or by writing the pin to, to zero, okay? So if you write pin to reset, then you will select this and then you can talk with it using the um, master output a slave input pin and also master input a slave output. So master output is the, uh, the output um, stream of data to the uh, sensor and then master input which is MI is whatever the accelerometer sent back okay uh, SPI is full du duplex so full duplex means that you can at the, at the, as, at the same time you can send and receive uh, to this um, sensor okay so in this case um, <clears throat> it has a function for selecting the accelerometer so basically you can see it's not really complicated you just uh, write a pin when you want to select it which is the CS low it just write a pin uh, the accelerometer CS GPIO port and pin to reset and then we then want to deselect it which is high uh, we set the pin okay so yeah this is just just some some over like some general uh, codes for using the 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 steam 32 f4 discovery okay so just let's take a look at here as well perfect everything is it seems in place now let's include uh, okay so one we want to use this steam 32 discovery accelerometer so we need to do this bsp accelerometer underline it is okay so let's go through the code i add it here we didn't want any parameter right oh sorry i think it didn't need any parameter no it doesn't need any parameter okay we just need to include that library here so include uh it's simpler to do f for discovery accelerometer okay perfect and then let's put a breakpoint here and then run build the code should be uh oh we have a problem so let's go okay so in LIS 302 we have also the same thing so it's using the common so we should make a folder common here here and then add the accelerator.h to it but we just skipped that so we just did it in the accelerator.h because if you want to make those folder it would be a bit more complicated you need to add them to the configuration of the project which is a bit a bit only um, complicated Okay, so we just skip that. Uh, but for now, we just use it. We just put it in the include folder, and then we just include it here. Now let's try to build it again. Okay, we need it somewhere else as well. Where is it? Okay, in LIS 3DSH. Okay, we need to remove this as well. Okay, perfect. The code build process was successful now let's try to debug to see what's going on in this function and by the way i already have uh, usb cables both usb cables connected because we are going to use the usb for printing some stuff as well okay so let's press f6 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 okay until here and then press f5 to go through the uh, the, the details of this function okay f6 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 okay so here it try to talk with the lis302 dl drive and try to read its id okay each sensor has id mostly most of the sensor has id they have they has an id that you can uh, basically read to know if the the device is working properly or if the the sensor is um, okay or yeah just, just reading id is just for identification okay so let's go here so it wasn't this lis302 so on my board i don't have lis302 and let's see if it's lis3 dsh drive okay so now we have a driver for LIS3DSH and then we try to read the address. 
if it's successful if we can read the id and if the id was 36 which is a number that it will return when you try to read its id then we we have this this um accelerometer on the board okay so we uh, apparently we have this accelerometer on the board so you can see it's go through the uh the initialization okay so let's just f6 press f6 uh, very quickly and to see if we get the yeah so we reached here and this means that the accelerometer is okay okay so that's it and it seems that accelerometer is okay just for making sure that everything is okay just let's write a function uh, let's write the if then we will check here that if the accelerometer was okay okay actually we check if it wasn't okay so if it wasn't okay we put a loop here and then we will um, basically just toggle toggle uh, LD what was it okay we, we talk, just talk about LD4 for the moment so in case the accelerometer initialization was not okay we just toggle uh, a pin uh, LED so we would know that there is a problem okay okay in case it wasn't okay we just go through this loop and we just flash and then let's also print ACC init error okay so it's a error handling basically technique so if we had a problem we just step, st stop here and we just loop around here and then we just print ACC init error and then LED in case it didn't it didn't initialize correctly it might happen it might happen that it doesn't um, initialize correctly okay so we have the BSP XR init and then guess what we just write bsp sorry bsp uh, get xyz okay so let's let's take a look at definition of this so for opening the the editor like that you just need to hold this, the control button down and then just click on the function so it will bring the definition of the function for you okay so here we need a pointer to a triangular acceleration axis okay so in simple term we just need an array a three uh, like three elementary and then we just pass it to here it should be integer and 16 bit okay and then we just pass it here and then this function will fill that array for us so it's called call by reference this is called call by reference and basically we will um, send the address of that uh, array here and this function will fill that array for us and it will fill it with the x y z and the first element is x second element is y and then the next element is y uh, z z axis okay so let's make a function here uh, let's exactly let's let's do it here it would be easier so it would be private variables okay so it was integer 16 t and then it should be int not u int because int is basically signed variable we can have a negative um gravities basically on this i mean negative value for the gravity not the negative gravity but uh, so it need to be integer and it need to be signed so we don't put the u and then a library uh, uh, array here so we say acc data and then it need to be three okay three element okay so here we just need to press uh, put this acc data and then that's it let's put a breakpoint here let's debug it Okay, so it ran until here and then let's check the data. 
okay we have some variables okay but the thing is that uh, you can now turn your board so just 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 turn it a bit and then let's check it should check yeah you see the values are changed and uh, uh, they're highlighted in, in yellow so it means that they changed okay so again so the data is changed okay now let's let's do very quick printing of them on the USB to check the the data okay okay so we don't need the things that we did last time just let's put a hundred millisecond delay and then uh, let's let's make okay so what we want to do is that we want to use this printf okay printf is like printf but the thing is that it will print a, a string in an array okay so i want to make an array for it so here you int 8 because it would be characters and then uh, str temp then oh, we will take it 100 because i think it would then be more than 100 characters then here is the temp then what we want to format so we want to print acc x percentage d which means we want to print an integer and then acc x x is sorry y or just y to make it shorter and then Z, and then backslash R backslash N, and that's it, and then just the, the value. So if you remember that the zero one was the X, and then ACT data one, and then ACC data two. Okay, perfect. That's it. Um, I think that's all you need here. Okay, just let's send that to the CDC. Okay, CDC. Oh, sorry. CDC transmit a steer temp and it asks us for the length of the steer temp, but here, since it's a variable length, we just write steer length, which will um, count the length of a string so we'll ask it to count the zero temp length for us then that's it i would say let's try it Okay, so let's open the Hercules serial and open. Okay, so we can see the stream of data. And then I took it to board. Let me just record it. Okay, if I move it, you probably can see the values are changing. Okay, so that's basically what you need. For the last part, let's um, implement a fun example. Okay, so there are some shooting training games. These 3D aim trainers. Okay, so basically you can just go online and just try to find one of them and then just click play and play in browser. Okay, so these are basically just training. Uh, 3d aim training basically so let's 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 play one and see how it is okay okay we deploy it press F to go full screen okay so it's ready so you can basically just shoot these uh, targets and then you will get some 
results okay i don't want to go through it so what we want to do is that we want to turn our board into the uh weapon and basically we want to aim with the board okay i think it would be fun i never tried it before and let's just get into it so let me open python oh sorry not the python the pie charm We have the stream of data. Oh, why it's not coming? Okay, so we have the stream of data, and I show you how to get to this point in the last um, tutorial. Okay, so now we just use this to see if we can control the mouse, and I think it would be fine. Okay, so let's in the, in the meanwhile that the pie charm is opening, so just let's search for something. Python control mouse position basically okay uh this is on python blah, blah 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 okay i think it's easy so let's open the python and we have the code from the last session if you remember so just I'll just uh, remove the extra extra stuff so we don't need to stopwatch anymore. Discounting and basically this I don't need this anymore. Just we want to receive handler and discounting and time we don't need it. And the stopwatch handler we don't need it. Okay, perfect. Just let's run the code once to see if it is working as expected okay apparently my hercules is stopped okay. hercules has it's it's a good tool but it's not really stable so sometimes it gets stuck okay so let's run the code yeah we can see the 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 results okay so we is the response is there for now um let's just split those so we'll basically so how can we reprocess this let's think about it so we can remove the first uh, four bytes all the time okay so steer response decode blah blah blah, blah. so this, the steer response is the thing that we want okay so steer response dots maybe split a slice or something because slice or tree let's see remove prefix okay i'm not a pro in python so i just know some basic stuff so let's see if it works we removed it let's see if it removed the acc what it saying okay it said the steer object Okay, let's see. Um, we say substring basically in other languages, so we say substring in. Oh, okay, it's simple. Okay, so what we will do is that the str response will be equal to a three until end. So it will just remove the first three and then will show us the rest. Okay. Oh, what happened? Oh, okay, I, I, I'm printing the response, not the SDR response. So it's the response now. Okay, we need to remove one more as well because there is, or maybe, no, 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 we don't need to do that. Okay, so we removed the first uh, four characters. Now let's split this ACC into ACC and then let's just split this split by okay by separator which is this one okay let's see what will be the print acc let's see what is there is the value here okay so we have now we have an array of um uh, some uh, value so it's x y and z okay so let's just okay if you see if we have an extra space here okay so we write acc equal to acc mm, how can we do that 
uh, ACC equal to ACC mm. okay all of them uh, I'm not sure how to do that I want to just go through them without the loop but for now apparently I need a loop so for uh, S in ACC S equal to S dot uh, S sorry that's just just this so we will remove that extra stuff at the at the beginning so let's see if it works we are printing ACC okay so what happened here is S okay we have the the values okay so or actually we can make it much easier just as we have the ACC now so X would be ACC X would be ACC 1 0 sorry so ACC Y would be ACC 1 ACC uh, Z would be ACC 2 okay that's easy now let's print them print ACC X Let's see if we have ACCX. Okay, we have ACCX. What we'll do now is that we just can we do like this here? Um, let's see. I think we can't. Uh, maybe we can do like this mm, uh, two until the end no okay so as I'm not a pro in Python so I just write it like this two two uh, one two to the uh, two to the rest okay so should work now. CCY, CCY, ACC, Z. Okay, so we have the the value, but there is like extra extra stuff there, so we needed to make three. Let's try again. So ACC one, ACC Y, X, Z, and Think it should be okay okay so we have the response now let's write s tier uh, let's change them to the to int integer basically I hope that works okay perfect we have the the values Is my print stuff print ACCX? Okay, perfect. We have the value. Okay, so that was for the first part. Now let's see if we can uh, move the mouse around. Just randomly move the okay in 32 API. Inter Let's install the in 32 API zero zero and let's just install pipe install win 32 API. Well, oh, I wrote wins. Okay, win32 API. Oh. Okay, 
after installing pi win32 start pi win32 okay perfect so it's indexing now let's see if it will be resolved uh, python stick is okay perfect let's run the code and my mouse yeah my mouse jumped there you saw so yeah it's jumping there so the mouse controlling thing is okay now let's do some experiments so okay so now let me record a video of my board so I'm gonna take the board like this okay so this is my desktop this is me and this is the board okay so I want to control the mouse like this so when I brought it up the mouse should go uh, up and then down and then left then right okay so with that we control the the a and with this we control the the uh, trigger for the weapon okay so uh, I know it's not like a really interesting way to control because um, it would be more like naturally if I could hold the board like this and then I try to shoot but the thing is that for that we need to re we need to have a magnetometer okay uh, because if you just imagine the G going this this way okay so if we change the board like this nothing really change okay so the <clears throat> the the gravity on XYZ XYZ is all this uh, is, is same all the time okay so that's the problem that we cannot measure the gravity with this so what we need is that we need to use a mag magnetometer and then with that magnetometer we can just uh, measure the heading okay so this is called heading so, but for now i think that uh, this would be uh, enough so what i do is that i will do like this and i will see the the values okay so the values for now for the so this is for me is the y axis okay so i can say that if it's over let's say 200 400 minus 400 as you can see now um, it's a up direction okay if i go down minus uh, anything under minus um uh, sorry anything under or more than uh, 400 it would be down and then for the other axis anything more than again anything less than minus uh, 500 let's say it would be left and then the other side is same more than uh, 500 it would be right okay so that that's um, that's what we will write at the moment okay so let's write a code first to just test the mouse movement so we would have a mouse X variable and then mouse x are a y variable okay then we'll set up it here so we would have mouse x let's say uh, 500 uh, at the start 500 and then mouse y equal to 500 as well so now the mouse should go in middle of, yeah it's just jumped here okay so perfect now what we can do is that uh, we can have another function here let's say control the mouse and then we would have a while true like the other one so we'll have a another thread okay so while true then just we will call this function and then we'll sleep sleep I will sleep okay time I think okay I need to import time
time sleep uh, seconds okay so we need to sleep for like 10 milliseconds okay let's see oh sorry I forgot to call it so we will make another thread t1 thread target is control the mouse and uh, t1 starts simple right so okay so it's just keeping my mouse here if I oh, oh now how can I stop this <laughs> okay I have a problem now I need to move it move to the um, Okay, my mouse is stuck there. What I can do is that, so you don't write that code, okay? So what I can do is that I can start the task manager and then try to find the pie charm. Okay, and then I will try to. Don't want to end the task, but I don't have much option. Okay. Okay, just stop there. Okay. End task okay Oof. it finished okay so in order to prevent that from happening again uh, we need to put a counter here so I write uh, a counter let's say uh, we wanted to run for 20 seconds so that would be uh, 20 seconds will be 20,000 milliseconds and we have there uh, 10 milliseconds so it would be 2,000 okay so while counter is greater than zero and every time we run this we just uh, write counter minus one okay so this way we have a timeout and then it will stop at certain point at after 20 seconds but now for now let's make it 10 seconds we want we don't want to waste time so let's run it hopefully it will stop at 10 seconds oh i think we've oh no it stopped okay it's fine now let's it's not very precise but it's okay so stopped mouse released okay so perfect um, now if we change this mouse X and mouse Y it should work. okay so now simply we just come here and then we write two lines of code three lines of code and we say if ACC Y was okay the problem is that I think it's in teacher should make it in teacher okay so if ACC X was greater than 400 I remember that it should go to okay it should go to so in this case mouse X should increase okay let's say now six just increase by ten, and then if um, if uh, 
if mouse x was smaller than 400 minus 400 then it should be minus so we can make it else if if it was more than 400 it goes to it uh, increment the x if it was less than minus 500 uh, 400 it will uh, decrease the mouse x and same thing for the other ax, uh, axis okay is it every oh no y and y y and y and a tap here. Perfect. You move the redundant reformat. Okay, perfect. Let's see. And let's make the the glue ball mouse Y and mouse X. Let's run. Okay. Okay, so if I hold the okay, I can show you how it works now. Oh, perfect. It's working in the first try. Okay, let me record the video. So, if I do okay, I think the code stopped. Okay. So, if I do like this, see it's going le uh, right, left, then up and then down so you can simply control the mouse like this okay um, what we can do so basically that, that I think that that's the 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 bare bone of what you need for now uh, so you can change it basically yourself and what I expect you to do is that you need to run that uh, FPV uh, thing and then you just uh, try it and hopefully you can record a video of it. But um, in case that you had any other idea, you can just discuss it with me and then you can implement it. And then um, uh, we can go forward with that as well. So that was the... Uh, things we needed for this session.